What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, we're doing... We did this thing a lot. So, sunscreen wars was one of the ideas I had for this channel like two years ago. We never executed on it. The idea was that we would compare sunscreen side by side and then uh, we would come out with the winner of the two. That's what you meant by that? Oh my gosh. So he's right. He posted about this on his Instagram like two years, two years ago. ago and I copied the picture and put it on mine. So if you go to my Instagram, I didn't even know what he meant by it. He just put up a picture and was like, okay, that sounds fun. I think you've actually posted on Instagram more than I have. I love Instagram. Oh yeah, look there at that. it is. Sunscreen Wars on July 8th, 2020. The first appearance, we teased the idea of doing a Sunscreen Wars. Here it is. <laughs> Two years later, Sunscreen Wars. So what we're gonna be doing in Sunscreen Wars is we're gonna be putting on one side of the face, one sunscreen. On the other side of the face, another sunscreen. And then we're gonna be comparing them and deciding which one we think is the best. So we tried to pick two sunscreens that were pretty similar so that it wasn't like competing in different categories. So we're gonna talk about some of the objective portions in it, what's in these sunscreens, what's really the benefit and the thrust of each one, and then the subjective portion of it, which one's our favorite. And we always have somewhat of a disagreeing opinion when it comes to our skin, so this will be interesting. Yeah, this is gonna come down to preference a lot of times, but you'll know what our opinion is. So today we're gonna to be comparing the a Dr. Maxfield favorite, the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46 with the Elta MD UV Restore Tinted Sunscreen. Comparing these two sunscreens in our first episode of Sunscreen Wars. Here we go. Here we go. So we're talking about two tinted sunscreens today. Why tinted sunscreens? Well, tinted sunscreens do blend better with some people's skin tones, but that's actually not the main reason why I use a tinted sunscreen. I use tinted sunscreen because they have iron oxides in them. The iron oxides actually block against visible light, and that blue light we know contributes to hyperpigmentation. So if you're someone who's prone to hyperpigmentation, I do recommend a tinted sunscreen that does have those iron oxides that are giving you additional protection. And there's actually a study that's been done that shows how blue light interacts with darker skin tones in particular to create this kind of dimer that is responsible for tyrosin being active longer, and it shows how blue light can affect people who are prone to hyperpigmentation. I think that's one of the unique benefits that these bring to the table because the only other way to do that is put on your normal sunscreen so thick that it's an opaque white cast, and that's the only real other way your sunscreen can block visible light. And then the downsides of tinted sunscreens. They're messy. They are very messy. They're, they're terribly messy. It's almost prohibitively messy, but you can get around it. I don't find that they're messy if I'm just using it on my day-to-day, -day, right? So if I have my sunscreen on the counter, I use sunscreen in the morning, I leave the door, everything's fine. I wash my hands. I leave it. Everything's fine. They tend to be messy when you carry them in your bag or you try to reapply them during the day and you're wearing a white shirt and then that ends up getting on your white shirt during the application process. All right. So let's talk about the dermatology tinted universal SPF first. All right. So I love flipping these things, by the way. So one of the reasons I love this is it is a tinted SPF in a moisturizer. And when you have it kind of in a lightweight moisturizer vehicle, I find that it's very natural to reapply throughout the day. I think it just lends to that a little bit easier. The additional things for this one that I think are nice, um, it is a combination sunscreen. This has zinc oxide and then it also has octanoxate and then this also has niacinamide. So it falls into that category of SPF plus you can sneak in your niacinamide. So when it comes to sunscreens, a lot of it is preference, right? Because if you get SPF 30, and that's our goal, 30 or more. As long as you have 30 or more, I'm not gonna fight you on your sunscreen choice. So it really just comes down to preference. So let's apply these, because we know the ingredients are good. Let's apply it and see how it performs. Uh, so I did this in a live with Abby Young, which by the way, if you haven't seen Abby Young, she's terrific. Everything she says on point. Now, we've talked about how messy this is. Now, again, it kind of gets on your hands. It can get onto other things like your phone or your bag. So my wife, after watching that video, she's like, what are you doing? Why are you making it so difficult? Because she uses this as her foundation hack. So I hijacked her makeup bag and within it, makeup sponge. And so you can apply your SPF there, apply it and dab it on. So one of the problems I foresee with that is that you're not gonna necessarily get enough because a lot of it's gonna get absorbed into the beauty blender, but it is a good way, I think, to blend and avoid. It actually goes on pretty nice. Yeah, it does. Now, it really is like a moisturizer. Yeah, I think you're right though. So you do, you can definitely lose a lot of product into the beauty blender. And additionally, I think you'll have a harder time getting the appropriate amount to be as optimally as effective as you would want it to be. So this is my other problem with this product. So why don't you go show them what you look like? What's wrong with it? You're dewy. 
There's nothing wrong with that. That's he looks good. very dewy. That's a good thing. <laughs> Even though I love this moisturizer and SPF moisturizer for most people, for me, it leaves me too dewy. I'm, I'm matte all the way. That's like my life goal. Just know that this one, I think, lends to being a little more dewy uh, than I think some of the other SPFs. It's certainly not a mattifying SPF. Say. No white cast. Yeah, no white cast. Blends pretty well. Definitely leaves you with a more dewy, hydrated finish. Pretty good. Okay. Next up, we're talking about the Alta MD UV Restore Tinted. So the, the main one that brought Alta MD to prominence was the UV Clear, which is actually a more similar formula to the dermatology one because it also has zinc oxide and also has your octane oxide in it. So it's more of a similar formula. So probably would have been a better comparison. <laughs> this one is a pure mineral sunscreen. It has titanium dioxide and zinc oxide only as the UV filters, and then it has other beneficial ingredients. I particularly like the squalane in it. It has a squalane base. That squalane base does leave you with that dewy finish, um, but this is a pure mineral sunscreen. It does not have chemical filters like the dermatology one. So that's why I like it. Big fan of this. This one actually won me over above the UV clear. Yeah, me too. You know what's funny? So a lot of people, I think just because of uh, the fear about the chemical sunscreens in general, which really isn't warranted to, to some extent, uh, this is such an easy one to recommend because not only this has become my one of my go to's like very consistent go to's because it is pure mineral. Um, it does blend pretty actually very easily for a pure mineral sunscreen sunscreen. Now I'm going to disagree with Dr. Shaw on one point here. I feel like it doesn't make you dewy. I think it hmm. I think it's very balanced. Well, let's see. Let's see. OK, so I'm going to use a finger length amount. One of the things I noticed with this is that if you don't use this particular sunscreen for a while, the first drop that comes out is like this yeah. clump thing. I see this a lot with like your zinc based sunscreens. Yeah, I never thought about that. I kind of always just chalked it up to the pump. <laughs> your his neck is a mess. This is why it's so important to look in a mirror before you go out the door. I have a problem. I get up early and I sometimes I don't turn on the lights before I leave. Just out of habit, so I'm waking up. And very frequently I have like sunscreen in my hair. Or... All right. All right, so finished applying them. We're gonna circle back in a little bit. We're gonna let them sit, let them set on the skin before we make a decision on which one we both prefer, which may be different. Okay, so let's talk about price point while this sets here. All right, Alta MD UV Restore, $41 for two ounces. So it comes about $20.50 per ounce. And the Dermatology SPS Moisturizer is $25 for 1.7 ounces, and that was $14.7 per ounce. So better value with the Dermatology one. LDMD has always kind of been positioned as a little bit pricier of a sunscreen. It was initially, it used to only be sold at a dermatologist's office. You know, they focus a lot on quality. Initially, their research was based on, on burn patients, as a matter of fact, and that's why zinc oxide is in all of their sunscreens. They do a lot of research. You know, I've been in some of those meetings where they actually look look at how UV affects the skin under different types of sunscreens that they use and they measure it and they have a bunch of skin identical uh, things that they use. So very, very complex research they do to actually support their sunscreens. Overall, very, very reliable sunscreen brand. Pricier though. Yeah, and that's where I've always bookmarked Alta MD as well. Just one of those brands that's invested a lot behind the scenes, ends up being extremely high quality, but also higher price point. So the price doesn't surprise me at all. It's just where that brand lives. And then we'll do like a few moments later. One eternity later. All right, now let's talk about performance in our first showdown here. Sunscreen Wars. So I'm actually surprised here, and I think this is the value of using them side by side. I've never used these two side by side. Let's start off by saying both are good. Yeah, both are both good. Both are good. So uh, for me, for my skin tone, I would say both blend very well with my skin. Both leave no white cast. So you're not going to go wrong on either domain there, right? Agreed. You don't see white cast, right? Not no at white all. cast. He has a little bit darker skin tone than me. So no white cast with either one. Um, I think the Alta MD leaves you, leaves you with more of a glow for me. That's squat. And when you rub your fingers over it, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> You're that, wrong. No, 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 don't tell you I'm wrong. The dermatology one is more dry. That's on the left. The left. I Like which one has more of like I agree. A, so here's the interesting thing. I think the dermatology one does feel drier, but I think it's shinier. Really? Yeah, what do you think? Um, I actually think the dermatology one is more matte in the end. Well, so there which you one go. Do you like more? Dang, I think I like the dermatology one. I leave Lean Alta MD. I think you can go either way here, honestly, and you're not going to be led astray. However, I think I lean Alta MD on this one for me. I think I lean dermatology, which actually surprises me because my thing has always actually been to double uh, SPF as my moisturizer, especially in the summers here. Did you use Beauty Blender for both of them? Mm, no, I used the Beauty Blender mm -hmm. only for the dermatology one. And 
Interesting. But yeah, I, I love to do my SPF as my moisturizer in the summer, and I've always, or not always, but I very regularly do that with LTMD. But now I'm like rethinking things. All right. Well, I think it's split 50 50 between the doctorly showdown here. So you can't go wrong either way. Uh, let us know which sunscreens you want us to compare next. We can get access to any sunscreen to try. Let us know what you want us to try. We'll compare them side by side and we'll let you know what our opinions are on them. Hopefully, you like the showdown and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, I think this could be a lot of fun. I would love to see this continue throughout the summer and maybe the fall just because I'm outside. I live outside and this would be super fun for me. And I think we have a ton of awesome sunscreens we can try. There's so many new sunscreens, even K sunscreens that have come out that are just extraordinary. So drop what you want us to talk about and uh, we'd, I'd love to see this keep rolling. All right, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. See you next time.